Well, welcome to Central, where it's okay to not be okay. I'm Nikki, and thank you for watching this experience today. Be sure to connect with us by dropping a comment below, or you can always go to Central.Family for events going on right now. Now, don't forget, we go live every weekend right here on YouTube, so you can hit that subscribe button and get notifications for when we go live and when we upload new content. For now, we have an incredible experience in store for you, so check it out. Hey, if you're watching online or in the room, we want to invite you to sing along with us. Let's get those hands going. Come on. Be an incredible night, right, church? Come on. And even though we're charging a ticket price, we want you to know that just covers the cost of the album, and any extra proceeds will go to Hope for the City to make sure people who are hungry are being fed. So thank you for being a part of this incredible evening. Hey, and if you had your hand up, the ushers didn't make it to you to be part of that invite team. As you exit, they'll have those packets. There were just so many hands up, and we couldn't get to all of you. Hey, help me welcome my friends Kyle and Jenny this weekend, will you? I met Jenny in the seventh grade, which it's been a minute since she was in the seventh grade, okay? I'm just going to go on the record. But she was at a camp that I was speaking at, and at that camp, she surrendered her heart and life to Jesus and made him the leader and forgiver of her life. Yep. 
And then she met Kyle during her junior year. Best thing that ever happened to Kyle was Jenny. And uh, they fell in love, got married, had two kids. They've been married now 15 years. Hard to believe. Yeah, isn't that great? <clears throat> and about eight years ago, they moved to Las Vegas because of this church called Central. They wanted to be a part of what God was doing here, to give back, to serve this community, to allow, allow their life to be used in, in tremendous ways. And their fingerprints are all over this church, okay? Like if you love the design and fill this room, Jenny was a part of that. She was part of our design team. She decided she was jumping in. They've always been the behind the scenes people, kind of the engine, making sure things are running. And Kyle has you know, had his hand over all kinds of projects, construction project, but never a finer moment in their journey, which was 80 weeks ago, when God called them to step up and coordinate and lead out on all of our hope for the city, food relief efforts, our drop, what we're doing with our hope for the holidays and hope for kids, making an impact in this city. And listen, they have been out there tirelessly for 80 weeks, making sure our food pantries are running, sometimes six days a week, multiple times a day, making sure that nearly 14 million pounds of food have been distributed, over 28 million meals to 257,000 households. Come on, church. It's incredible. And they've been a part of all the logistics of that. And I know, Kyle and Jenny, your heart is just to serve others. Tell us when God really prompted that in your heart and he said, I want you to do this. Yeah, I think I was at most of the station casinos when we started and we were doing 800 to 1,000 cars a day. And being someone who's normally behind the scenes, it was just amazing to see the volunteers and be able to talk to the people. And we were there making sure we weren't just giving them food. Um, we were talking to them if they needed prayer or anything else, like making them feel comfortable. And like we were just giving them food, obviously, but we were really giving them hope and making sure that they were okay in their future. That's so good. And that's the heart, right? You and 2,000 plus volunteers have been giving people hope now for 80 weeks, and it's incredible. And I know you've been blessed, right? You've seen a lot of amazing God stories out there. God showed up. He's blessed you in more ways than you can fathom or imagine. Tell us about that. Um, yeah, like Kyle said, we're usually behind the scenes people, so this is highly uncomfortable for us. Um, but the thing that is amazing is that when the pandemic hit, we saw a need and we were willing to jump in and just do whatever God asked. And with that comes the joy of seeing those people come through that line and receive the food. And we weren't just giving them food, like Kyle said. We were giving them hope that they were going to be able to feed their family for the next week. And in an uncertain time, and we were all didn't know what to expect to just see that they had certainty, that they were gonna be able to feed their kids for a week and that there were people willing to do whatever needed to be done to make sure that um, they were being the hands and the feet of Jesus. So it was more joy. I was able to receive more joy than anything in that. That's so good and that's what God promises, right? He'll give us that kind of joy. Well, God's used you guys in a dramatic ways. Hundreds of thousands of people's lives have been forever marked. I mean, I think about the hope that you gave people, especially during the early days and months of the pandemic where it didn't look like they were going to be able to make it, but you were right there just making such a difference. And you continue to do that even this week in people's lives. Church, I don't even know how we can do justice to celebrate all the difference they've made. But listen, let's just picture we're in the fourth quarter at your favorite team's football, okay, game. And we're at the game. It's fourth quarter. 10 seconds to go, and your team just scored the winning touchdown. That's how I want you to react to all of their hard work and effort. So let them know how much you love them. Come on. And hopefully you're all Bears fans, by the way. Oh, we need prayer. Anyway, <laughs> hey, you might be here this weekend and literally you need help. If you don't hear anything else in your whole experience here, would you remember this? Central's a place that wants to meet your needs. 
We're serious about that. That's why we have a 24-hour church line where you can get prayer and encouragement. Maybe you need food. We can help in that way. I don't know what your needs are, but we're here for you. But you may be here this weekend and you know that God has blessed you to be a blessing. He rescued to help rescue others. And so I want to encourage you to step in and help us continue all that we're doing here as a church to bless this city and to bless others. It's easy to get involved. Financially, you can give a gift at the close of our experience. Our ushers will have offering buckets. You can go up to one of our generosity team members wearing a red apron, give by credit or debit card, or you can go to central.family or centralonline.tv and give a gift online. But every dollar you give, we want you to know firsthand, you are giving hope. Hope to people that need to know that they can have a bright tomorrow and that there are people that care and are with them in some of their darkest hours. So thank you, Central. Thank you for making a difference and loving people like that. Well, let's go to God in prayer. Would you join me just asking his blessing? Well, Father, we know that you're here because we sense your presence in this very room. The enthusiasm, the excitement, the love, that comes from you. And we invite you even more into our experience. You promise as we lift up your name, as we draw near to you, you just step into our world and draw near to us. So we invite you to do that, Jesus. We need you right now. And we want you just to flood our life with your mercy and your goodness and your grace. We want to experience your love in your presence like we've never known. And we want our lives to count for your honor and for your glory, for we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. How are we doing today, Central Family? And I mentioned before summer that Central Live, our worship team here, has written many new original songs over the past year, many of which we've been singing throughout the summer and into the fall. And we want to teach you a brand new Central Live original song today. And the reason we're singing all these new songs is because on November 4th at 7 p.m., we're going to have a live album recording right here in the room. It's going to be an amazing night where we join together and we capture the heart, the voices, the faces of the Central Church family. And just like we would do for the Raiders or the Golden Knights, I'm asking the Central Church family to be here that night, to be present, to get a ticket. Uh, You can simply go to our website, central.live. I want you to know the reason it's ticketed is because it's a special event. There's costs associated with putting on this album. But anything above and beyond the proceeds uh, that we get that night will all go to Hope for the City to help feed hungry people right here in Las Vegas. And I hope that you'll be here for that special night. I've been absolutely blown away by God, how God has moved already through Central Live's music. Just recently, over 10 million streams worldwide, and of the top 20 cities in the world, 10 of those are in the United States. The other 10 are spread out through the entire world. It's pretty incredible what God is doing, and I'm so excited to see what He does in the future. But this new song we're going to teach you today is called Still I Will Sing.
of your majesty I'll sing of salvation Your love has rescued me Oh, it's sin I'm singing my heart out Jesus has set me free
focus on things above, not on things of this earth. We want to take a moment today to set our focus on God. No matter what you're faced with, as a central church family, we stop and we pray for the needs of our community every weekend. And I know this may be strange, but if you need prayer, whatever you're faced with today, would you just boldly slip your hand up in the air so we can pray for you? If you're next to somebody with their hand raised, I want to encourage you to stretch a hand out towards them. You don't have to touch them. Let's just pray and ask God to do what only he can do. God, right now, we set our focus on you. Many of us are carrying some burdens that maybe our neighbors or our friends today have no idea what we're faced with. God, we believe that you, you know every detail of our story. You know the challenges that we're up against. So God, right now, we let go and we trust that you are gonna do the impossible in our lives. We set our focus on you. Thank you for being a good God and loving us unconditionally. You're a great God, for it's in your name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Let's sing this chorus again. And how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God.
Good to see you guys this morning. Thank you so much for being here. I am fired up. I'm going to do a quick introduction because our guest speaker this morning has an amazing message, and that is a dear friend of ours, Pastor Herbert Cooper. How many of you love Pastor Herbert? Come on. If you're new around Central, you will understand what all the cheering is about in short order. Dear friend of mine and a dear friend of our church for many, many years now, and uh, we always love it when Pastor Herbert is in the house. He pastors People's Church in Oklahoma City, along with his amazing wife, Tiffany, and their family. And so let's give a big, huge, warm Central welcome for Pastor Herbert Cooper! Oh man, I am fired up to be back at Central. This is home away from home. I, I love to be here. I love what God is doing across campus life, the lives that are being changed, people coming to faith in Christ, people being water baptized, people being set free from addictions, relationships being healed and mended. God is on the move here at Central. Can I tell you what I love and admire about this church? A pandemic could not stop the move of God here at Central. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Pastor Judd and Lori for your leadership. I, I love your pastors, uh, their heart for you, the heart for the church, the heart for the hurting, the heart for the broken, the heart for the least of these, hope for the city. You couldn't have physical services for in, in person for a, a season like many churches around the nation, but the church didn't stop here at Central. You kept feeding people and helping people and touching the broken and on and on and on and on and on. And, and a lot of pastors are weary, a lot of pastors are tired and your pastors have led through this crazy divisive season a season when people many people are hurting confused and dis discombobulated and they've led with such wisdom such strength such boldness such compassion for hurting humanity and i just honor you too for your courageous, bold, incredible leadership. I respect you, and I'm honored to call you both friends. Come on, can we give it up one more time for our pastors? Come on, come on, what, what incredible leadership. Well, today I, I have my, my girlfriend, my, my boo, my, my sweet thing, my, my baby's mama, my... My, my wife this year, we've been married 24 years in December. I got my best friend with me. Tiffany, would you stand up? Come on, would you stand Just give the folks a quick wave. Come on. There's my girl. And 
And we have four precious kids. Here's, here's our picture of my family right here. On the far right is our oldest son, Kel. He's a senior in high school. On the far left is Mr. Cade. He is a sophomore in high school. And then our baby girl, Karis Marie. She is 15 years old and a freshman in high school. Then the baby of the family, Mr. Case. He is 13 years old and this is the joy of my life my lovely family come on give it up for my family I'm thankful for my wife and my my kids and it's great to have my wife here as we're in this series happier together and I want us just to quickly dive into God's word I want to take us at all of the locations to Genesis chapter number three and pick up reading in verse number one it says this now the serpent was more crafty the serpent the the snake was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, say, say sweet thing. Say, say girl, hey, hey baby, did, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the trees that are in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. You will certainly not die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing, to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom. She took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. And Adam and Eve's relationship got all mixed up because they listened to the serpent instead of the savior. And it's amazing how the serpent can influence our relationships in negative ways. He can use Hollywood to influence our relationships in a negative way. He, he could even use family or friends. He, he can use music to influence our relationships in a negative way. I, I grew up in the 80s. Are there any 80s folks in the house? Grew up in the 80s? Come on, come on. Oh man, I love the 80s. I, I love the television sitcoms in the 80s. I love, I love movies in the 80s. I, I love the music of the 80s. I, I think of some of the best music out back in the 80s. Come on, the love songs in the 80s? Mm, make your marriage good. Them love songs in the 80s? Come on, y'all. It would, it would help your dating relationships. And, and I love those love songs, but, but, but I recently went back and started listening to some of those love songs again. And I thought they were so amazing back in the day, but when I began to listen to them Recently, I thought that wasn't as good as I thought it was. Come on, anybody remember when a man loves a woman by, by Michael Bolton? And, and, and the words, they sound good, but they really aren't that good. It, it, the song goes, when a man loves a woman, can't keep his mind on nothing else. He trade the world for the good thing he found. If she is bad... He can't see it. She can do no wrong and turn his back on his best friend. If he puts her down, when a man loves a woman, spend his very last dime and trying to hold on to what he needs, he'd give up all his comforts and sleep out in the rain if she said that's the way it ought to be. When a man loves a woman, and I love Tiffany, but she can do wrong. I've seen it. And, and a brother does not want to sleep out in the rain. That means I got kicked out the house. And ladies, you don't want a man to spend his last dime. That means you got to take care of the joker. You're like, keep some money, bro. I, I, I remember the song All My Life by Casey and JoJo. 
Oh yeah, that, that was my jam back in the day. And the song went like this. Some of the words said, close to me, you're like my mother. Close to me, you're like my father. Close to me, you're like my sister. Close to me, you're like my brother. And you are the only one, my everything. And for you, this song I sing. Church, that's weird. (laughs) I don't want Tiffany to be like my brother. I don't want my wife to be like my father. Uh, It's a little weird. I remember Sting back in the day. I remember, I love this song back in the day. Every breath you take. Come on, who remembers that? Come on, every breath you take. I'll be watching you. Huh? Every single day. Every word you say. Every game you play. Every night you stay. I'll be watching you. Huh? Every move you make. Every vow you break, every smile you fake, every claim you stake, I'll be watching you every single day, every word you say, every game you play, every night you stay, I'll be watching you. And I hear those words and neither Tiffany or I want to watch each other all day, every day. I don't want to see every breath she takes. That's controlling that's suffocating. Give a brother some space. Come on, I remember this song back in the 80s. Anybody remember this? Back at One by Brian McKnight. You're like a dream come true Two, just wanna be with you Three, cause it's plain to see That you're the only one for me Come on, Sidra, one more time, one more time. One, you're like a dream come true. Two, just want to be with you. Three, because it's plain to see that you're the only one for me. Yeah, four, respect that's one, two, three. Oh, that was the jam back in the day. And it sounds so sweet, doesn't it? But think about the words. He's giving us the steps to love. Here's the steps to love. One, you're like a dream come true. Two, I just want to be with you. Three, you're the only one for me. I mean, he gave us three steps, but there were no steps. <laughs> and, and, and then he said the fourth step to love is to repeat steps one, two, three. <laughs> Come on, it's step five. Make you fall in love with me. I mean, the steps to love, and, and the song just creates this expectation like, like love is just this Feeling. It's, it's just this emotion. And so many of us, whether it's Hollywood, whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's music, we tend to frame up our relationships with the wrong expectations. And disappointment is the gap between your expectations and your reality and professional counselors will tell you and I that one of the biggest problems that we encounter in our relationships is we bring in wrong expectations and today there is a lot of disappointment and a lot of frustration and a lot of tension and a lot of anger Because a lot of people have wrong expectations when it comes to their marriage, to their dating relationships, to their parenting, to sex, to money, to communication, to conflict resolution. 
So many people bring in wrong expectations and it hinders their relationships from flourishing. And what I want to do today during this next few moments is I want us to identify some wrong expectations that culture has given us. I want us to strengthen our relationships by, by just kind of exposing these wrong expectations. And at the very beginning of this message today, here's what I want to just encourage us with. Before before you start dating, but before you get married, before you get a divorce, I want to encourage you with this. Please just check out your expectations because perhaps the person's not the problem. It's your expectations. Let's look today, let's look today, let's look today at three wrong expectations of marriage. And of course, this message applies to dating or, or friendship, business, career, school. Three wrong expectations of marriage. Number one is this, you complete me. You complete me. Genesis, look, let's go back to the book of beginnings, the very first book in the Bible. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 says, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. I want somebody to hear this today. You are created in the image of Almighty God. You're created in your, the, the awesome image of God. And God is complete and he's whole. And you are a master masterpiece created in God's image. The psalmist says it like this in Psalm 139 in verse 14. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and I know that full well. And somebody needs to know today that you are fearfully and wonderfully made right now. Right now, you, 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 don't get, you don't become fearfully and wonderfully made once you start dating somebody or, or when you get engaged or when you get married. No, no, no. You're fearfully and wonderfully made right now. A person does not complete you. God is the only one who completes you and you're made in his image and you're already fearfully and you're already wonderfully made in the image of God Almighty. I love what the scripture says in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 3. It says, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. God's power has given you everything you need for life and for godliness. No person, no spouse no boyfriend, no girlfriend, no person can complete you. It's God alone who gives you everything that you need for life and godliness. And if you try to get life and godliness from some other person that God never created them to do that in your life, you're going to end up disappointed and frustrated because God is the only one who can complete you. Matter of fact, let me just show you what God created a spouse to do in your life. The, the Bible talks about this in Genesis chapter 2 in verse number 18. It says, the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Everybody say the word helper. helper. Come on, center. You can do better than that at all of our locations. Come on, shout. Helper. Yeah, now notice the Bible says God made Adam a helper, not a completer. God, God, God created spouses to be a helper, not a completer. Finding a wife or a husband doesn't complete you. It actually magnifies you. That, that they're a helper, not a completer. The Bible says that, that God gave Adam, Eve, a, a help. Er. Everybody say, er. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your spouse is there to be a help. Er. And so central finding a spouse will not make you strong. But if you're already strong and you find the right person, they'll make you strong. Er. If you're wise and you find the right person, 
They'll just magnify what you already are and you'll become wiser. If you're a healthy person and you meet the right spouse, the right spouse will help you be healthy. Er, if you're kind, you'll be kind. Er, if you're nice, you'll be nice. Er, if you're godly, you'll be godly. Er, if you're skinny, you'll be skinny. Er, okay, not that last one. No, not that last one. Marriage will mess you up, huh? It'll put some weight on you. But but understand this: a spouse doesn't complete you. They're a helper. They will magnify what you already are. And it doesn't just work for the positive. It also works for the negative that's inside of you only gets magnified in marriage. If you're insecure when you get married, you'll be insecure. -er. If you're broke and you get married, you'll be broke. -er. If you're greedy when you get married, you're going to be greedy. Er. If you're unhealthy when you get married, you're going to be unhealthy. Er. If you have an anger problem when you get married, oh, trust me, when people get married and friction, you're going to be angry. Er. If you are mean before you get married, you're going to be mean. Er. If you're lazy before you get married, you're going to be lazy. Er. If you got a dirty mind before you get married, when you get married, you're going to be dirty. Er, listen to me. If your mouth is filthy before you get married, when you get married, you will be filthy. Er, a person doesn't complete you, they magnify you. And we can't expect a spouse, a boyfriend, a friend, or any other person to do something that God never created them to do. We have to look to God to complete us, He's the one that completes us. I want us just to see a second wrong expectation from this story in Genesis. And the second wrong expectation is you are my purpose. You are my purpose. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 15, it says the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden to work it and take care of it. And, And so God gave Adam a purpose before he created Eve. And the right expectation is to understand a person is not your purpose. Let's look a little further into this in Genesis chapter two and verse number 19. It says, now the Lord God had formed out of the ground and all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky and all the wild animals. But Adam had no, notice this suitable helper was found. So before God created Eve, Adam was working. He was naming the animals. He was taking care of the garden. He was trimming the trees. He was exploring the rivers. Well, before he ever had a wife, Adam had a purpose. A person is not your purpose. Your life is not waiting to start until you find a person. Listen, if you're single, you need to be living out your God-given purpose right now. A person is not your purpose. You got purpose right now. Get your degree, work your job, buy your house, pay your bills, live for God. God has given you a purpose right now. And, And I'm talking to some folks right now. You've been through some relationship trauma You've been recently divorced. You've been through a horrible breakup. Somebody just had your heart broken in a million pieces. And I want you to understand that God still has a purpose for you. Your life doesn't end when you lose a person. God still has purpose for your life because purpose comes from God, not people. You still got purpose. God still has a plan. No matter how your heart's been broken, God has purpose for your life. I love what Acts chapter 13 verse 36 says. It says, now when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his ancestors and his body decayed. David served God's purpose in his own generation. 
And here's what God wants you to do. He wants you to serve his purpose right now in this generation because God has purpose for your life. Your purpose is not a person. Now, yes, 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 you can, you can meet the dream girl or, or the dream guy, but you can't have a guy or the girl be the dream. If you make the guy or the girl your dream, your purpose, your entire life, you've created an unrealistic expectation that they can never live up to. And you're going to be disappointed and they're going to be frustrated because purpose comes from God not a person. And when you don't know that purpose comes from God and you don't know what your purpose is, it's easy to meet somebody. It's easy to get married and start to believe that that person is your purpose. And whenever you make a person your purpose, it doesn't lead to purpose. It leads to resentment. At least a heartache, at least a disappointment, because they can never live up to the unrealistic expectation that you made them your entire purpose. And I want to just show you quickly, I want to just do a little teaching for a moment and help you here. Let me quickly give you two insights about your God given purpose. I want you living out your purpose. And, and the first is this two insights. Number one, your purpose is to live for God. It's your purpose. Second Timothy chapter one, verse nine says, he has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. So notice this, your purpose is to be saved, or another way to say that your purpose is to give your life to Jesus Christ. If you're not a follower of Jesus, God's purpose for your life is that you would give your heart, that you would give your life to Jesus Christ. Now, if you're here and you are a follower of Jesus Christ, your purpose right here in this verse says is to live a a holy life, a life set apart to God, a life that follows God's word, that obeys God's word. And I want you to notice that God gave Adam a command before he gave him a companion. Obey me, follow me. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 16 and 17, and the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. And Adam had a command before he had a companion. His purpose was to follow God's command. God told Adam, don't you eat from the tree in the middle of the garden? But Adam got all messed up because he put a companion ahead of God's command. And really, relationship trauma, relationship chaos happened because he got skewed in his purpose and put command, companion over God's command. And I want us to understand God has purpose for your life and your purpose as a follower of Jesus is to follow God's command. God says he wants us to pray in God's word. He wants us to, to read the Bible. He wants us to worship. That's God's purpose for your life, to be at Central every single weekend, worshiping God with other believers, singing the songs, hearing God's word preached. That's God's, that's God's command and purpose for your life, to be in a small group, to get on a service team and to serve and to move God's church forward by serving at Central. Man, that's God's purpose for your life, to be a tither, to give our resources, to build God's kingdom. God wants us to love people. He wants us to turn the other cheek. He wants us to be a unified church and to do everything that we can that will lead to unity and the building up of God's church. God has purpose for your life. Don't put companion over the command. Obey God's word. Follow God's word because God has purpose for your life and a person can never replace God's purpose for your life. I want you to see a second thing here, a second thing, and that is this. Your purpose 
is to live out God's unique purpose for your life. So, so the first one I gave you, that's for every follower of Jesus, is to follow God's command. But this second one is so unique to you. God has a specific, unique purpose for your life. And to all of my singles, come on, anybody, anybody believe in God for meet that special someone, just wave at me like this, come on. Mm-hmm. Let me say this to you, when you're looking, look for somebody that will help you live out God's purpose for your life. Like who will help me live out God's purpose? When, when Tiffany and I met back in college, 25, 26 years ago, and we, we met and started to date and started to fall in love. And I was like, I think, she, I think she's the one. I think, I think she's the one. Oh, I like her. She loves God. She's pretty. We talk on the phone. Oh, how you doing? You doing good? How you doing good? You doing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know we've been on the phone for three hours, but how you doing? You doing okay still? You doing okay? What are, what are you doing right now? What are you doing right now? What are you doing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we better, we better get off the phone. Okay, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. You hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, we got, it's, listen, it's three o'clock in the morning. We got, we got to hang up. I'm going to count to three, okay? I'm going to count to three, and we're going to both hang up at the same time. One, two, three. Are you still there? Oh, I'm still here. I'm still, I'm still. We were, we were falling in love. Oh, this is the one. I think this is the one. And then, and then I got on the phone with one of my friends. He was in college as well. And I said, man, I think I met the one. I think I met my wife. Man, she loves God. There's chemistry. Man, I think this is the one. And he said, he said to me back in the day when I was in college, I played college football. He, they called me Coop or Cooper. He said, Coop, hey man, hey, hey, God has a purpose for your life. He's called you to preach. And the devil will bring somebody into your life to distract you from God's purpose. He said, you got to watch out for the devil. I got off the phone. I said, oh my gosh. I called Tiffany. True story. I said, the devil has sent you into my life to distract me from God's purpose. And I broke up with her. About 24 hours later, I called her back. Oh, Lord Jesus! It was the pizza! It wasn't God! It was, it was pizza! Come back! But let me tell you, Tiffany and I, we were so serious when we were dating that we are here to help each other fulfill God's unique purpose for our lives. Find somebody that will help you fulfill your purpose. If you're already married, you, God put you together already. Even in the tension and all the friction, friction, you all work together to live out God's unique purpose for your life together. There's a third, there's a third unrealistic expectation, a wrong expectation. And number three is this, you are here for my happiness. Genesis chapter two and verse 24. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Could everybody shout, one flesh? flesh. God tells the husband and wife, leave your father and your mother and become one flesh. Notice that God does not say the goal of marriage is to leave father and mother and to become happy. Happiness wasn't the goal. Oneness was God's goal. If your focus is on just being happy, you will never attain it. Your focus as a married couple needs to be on we are called to become one flesh. And if you will work and focus on becoming one flesh, happiness will follow. But God's goal is you would become 
one, not, not live two separate lives, but, but a, a, a married couple, you'd become one. You would strive to serve God together as one, to, to be one in money and one in having sex just to, between the two of you, one in parenting and one with unified goals and purpose. Becoming one is the key, it's the goal. And friends, can I tell you, as I look at Adam and Eve, I think they had a lot easier to become one flesh. It was so much easier for them because they didn't have to bring in all their baggage and all their parents' baggage and relationships that they had been in before. No, they were the first human beings. But for you and I, wow, when I got married to Tiffany, becoming one flesh was hard because I brought in so much pain and so much junk and so much mistrust Sexually abused at the age of 13. Was involved in sex before we got married. And I just brought all, I brought all of this in to our relationship. And becoming one flesh was not easy. You know, when I, when I got married to Tiffany, here's what I really believed. I really believed this. I thought Tiffany needed to make me happy. When we got married, I thought, you know what? It's your fault. If I'm not happy, it's your fault. The reason we're having marriage problems is because you're not making me happy. And, and, and there was no way, I, I didn't see it, but she could never live up to my unrealistic expectations. Because, you know, I had, I, my, my expectations were actually a moving target. I mean, one day I wanted that, and then I, then I changed it. I want this, no, now I want that. And, and, and she just, she, she, she could never make me happy. And I had to really shift to begin to realize that happiness is an inside job. Joy comes from God, not my wife. And I had to really focus on, Herbert, you have to change you. But I spent years, I'm, I'm actually embarrassed to tell you, I spent years of our marriage trying to change Tiffany. Just, just change. If, if you would just stop that, if you would just change that, if you, if you would do that different, I'd, I'd be happy. And I, I spent all of my energy trying to change Tiffany, and it didn't make our marriage better. Actually, walls came up, and frustration, and tension, and tears, and misunderstanding, because I spent all of my time going, I need to change you. And I had to shift my focus and start working on changing me. And can I tell you, that was a game changer. It wasn't that Tiffany didn't have areas to grow, but it was a game changer in our marriage when I said, I'm going to make my focus on changing who I can. And that is Herbert Lee Cooper Jr. Change. You change. You grow. You become better. And, and when I started focusing on changing me, it's amazing the impact that it had on our marriage. You see, my, my goal was happy over healthy. I didn't realize the goal was that we were supposed to be one flesh. I just, I just wanted to be happy, happy, happy. So every conversation we had was how you make me happy or the, the, the framework I would view arguments in will make me happy. And if we were dealing with tension, well, you need to make me happy. And I never really understood that the real goal that God had was that the two would become one flesh healthy how do we get healthy how do we have healthy communication how do we resolve this in a healthy way how do we deal with our insecurities in a healthy way how do we become one flesh and i'm talking to some people right now your marriage is struggling and there's hope for you today because of jesus christ if god could take my broken life and bring healing to my life to my marriage he can do it for you i'm talking to somebody right now that God wants to strengthen your relationship today. Happier together is possible if you'll focus on becoming one instead of focusing on becoming happy. Heavenly Father, thanks for your word today. 
Thanks for speaking to us today. Thanks for having your way today. Thanks for strengthening hearts today. Thank you for touching marriages and dating relationships today. Thank you, God, for this word today that will help us identify the wrong expectations and to help us walk in the truth of your word. I pray strengthen every marriage, strengthen every home, help all of our singles, God. I thank you right now, God, for turnarounds and breakthroughs and healings in marriages and relationships today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, what an incredible experience. Remember that we go live every weekend and it's a great way to meet and interact with so many of the Central family. For now, as you go on throughout this week, remember to hold on to Romans 8 that says, if God is for us, who can be against us? We'll see you next time.